My name is Matthew Thomas. I'm a genetic counselor at the University of Virginia. Uh, in this video, we'll be summarizing the exome variant server or the uh, NHLBI exome sequencing project and how you review variants using that particular database of normal controls. Although Exact does a very nice job of presenting data from multiple databases like ESP and Thousand Genomes, it's also helpful to know how to search those in case the exact database is out of service for some reason or uh, if you want to absolutely confirm that there wasn't some pipeline uh, issue that led for exact to not um, actually cover the data that you want to make sure uh, exists in one of those alternative databases. So um, if you know the um, genomic coordinates, you're able to use that to enter it into the exome variant server. Uh, there are a few different ways to search. Uh, one of those is just by the specific chromosome location um, or the genomic coordinates by chromosome. And so I happen to know that this is a gene MYH11 that's present on chromosome 16. So the format for that would be 16 followed by the specific genomic coordinate. And uh, what you can get is choose the database that you, data you would like to review. Um, and I want to look at both European and African American data. And um, this is a little bit squished. So I zoomed out there for a second. So you're able to see um, how frequently this variant has been pre is present in the exome variant server, or ESP, uh, exome sequencing project. So you can see that the wild type were more common allele in European Americans was observed uh, 85 181 times, whereas the uh, variant that we're concerned about was seen 19 times um, in a European population. You can see the data for African Americans and then all genotypes put together. Uh, you can see the average sample uh, read depth uh, is, is quite good, uh, which you can contrast with our uh, long QT example. Um, and then there's some additional information about um, uh, in silico uh, programs, although there'll be a separate video that addresses those. Um, and so you can use that to calculate allele frequencies. Um, another tool that you can use to make sure is, uh, is that the data, although this is represented in the other page, is how good the sample read depth is. And you can see that represented again by, on average, what it is for uh, uh, European and African Americans. Although there is some certain redundancy between EXAC and ESP and Thousand Genomes uh, databases, it's still probably helpful to get a sense of how to use those um, just in case EXAC is down or um, some of the data from ESP and EXAC or ESP and Thousand Genomes aren't. Uh, contained within exact based on pipeline and filtering issues. So um, there's a few ways to search uh, ESP and the Thousand Genomes browser and so I can't promise you the way as I do it is the most efficient but I'll show you at least a few I'm familiar with. Uh, one is taking the uh, RSID for uh, a particular variant. In this case this is the uh, KCNQ1 variant um, that is associated with potential long QT syndrome and uh, the exome variant sequencing project or exome sequencing project uh, there's multiple abbreviations so there's ESP and there's EVS nonetheless you can just paste in um, the RSID here and search for the variant within the server um, this is consistent with what we saw in exact there's no SNP in their database um, and the interesting thing is, as you can see why, uh, by clicking on the coverage results. So it tells you the chromosome, chromosome position, um, number of base pairs, obviously it's one, uh, the number of samples that were covered in the EVS, and then you can see the average sample read depth is only one, uh, and they break it down by African American and European American samples, uh, and you can see that the average sample read depth is quite low, which actually may explain precisely why um, 
there was no variant seen. So it's either not truly as rare as we suspect that it is because the read depth wasn't good enough and so we wouldn't have found those people that are in this database of presumably healthy people or um, it truly is rare but we don't have a way to prove it using the um, EVS and other next-gen um, databases.